Hello, I'm called Jingonelli and I'm going to be taking you through another part of our cost of our capital. And uh, before I begin off, I'm going to require you to subscribe and also follow what I'm pointing at because I'm already having laid down information. So for today, I'm going to begin with example one. Uh, BC Limited is using the following sources of funds, amounts in uh, US, USD, that is US dollars. Uh, source, I'm having bonds of amount. 500 million preferring shares of 300 million uh, ordinary shares of 400 million retained earnings of 200 million the bonds are irredeemable with a face value of a hundred thousand then the market value of uh, 120,000 at an in at an interest rate of 15 percent preferring shares are issued at a dividend rate of 11 percent the initial dividend for ordinary shares is at 15 percent with a face value of 50,000 each so they are saying the market value of the ordinary shares is 95,000 and the growth rate is 10 percent per annum so the flotation cost for the ordinary shares is uh, 1000 per share and the tax bracket for bc limited is 30 percent required uh, determine the specific cost of capital for each source of capital then uh, determine the weighted average cost of capital so with the solution i'm going to begin with uh, my irredeemable bonds which is going to be my irredeemable debt and for irredeemable debt i'm going to be using this formula of cost of debt uh, which i'm going to subject to a tax shield so it's going to be cost of debt is equal to interest divided by the market value so with this i'm going to first of all get to know what was my interest from the question my interest was 15 percent if it was 15 percent what is the amount of this interest so i'm going to get the face value the face value of uh, this bond which was a uh, hundred thousand which i'm going to multiply with the 15 percent in order to get the amount of interest which was this which is fifteen thousand so after me getting the fifteen thousand that's going to be my amount for interest so after that i just get to substitute in i know my interest is fifteen thousand my uh, market value is going to be 120,000 and my tax is 30 percent so i just substitute into this formula which is 15 uh 50, 15 divided by 120,000 uh times the bracket one minus uh, 0 0.3 bracket and uh, i'm going to work out this uh, this divided by this i'm going to get this uh, amount times the 0 0.7 uh, put it in bracket so this time was this i'm going to be getting uh, 0 0.0875 whereby i'm going to take three the small places whereby i'm going to get 0 0.088 then i always have to multiply by a hundred to i always have to subject it to a percentage by multiplying it to a hundred so my cost of debt is going to be 8.8 .8 percent So for the preference shares, for the preference shares, uh, the cost of preference shares already given in the question, which is 11%. Uh, we get it from here whereby the same preference shares are issued at a dividend rate of 11%. So me after knowing that, I go to the ordinary shares. So to the ordinary shares, uh, it starts from here whereby they are saying the initial dividends for ordinary shares is at 15% with a face value of 50,000 each. And uh, market price for ordinary shares is 95,000 95, and the growth rate is 10% per annum. So the flotation cost for ordinary shares is 1,000 per share. So after me knowing that, uh, I get to know that I'm having a uh, flotation cost on the ordinary shares. So once I'm having the ordinary uh, the flotation cost, I'm going to use the formula whereby uh, uh, I'm going to use the formula which is having, uh, which is catering for the flotation cost. So cost of equity or, or this is ordinary shares stroke or equity shares so cost of equity is equal to dividend uh, divided by uh, the p naught which is our market value minus the flotation cost then plus g which is our growth rate so i get to know that my growth rate from the question was 10 percent the growth rate is 10 percent per annum so 10 divided by 100 i'm going to get 0 0.10 and then the p naught which is a uh, market value they are saying the market value of inertia is 95000 so the p note is going to be 95000 and then the f is going to be a flotation whereby they are saying the flotation cost for ordinary share is 1000 um, per share 
so which is f which is f is going to equal to 1000 so after me knowing that what about dividends they're saying the the initial dividend for ordinary shares is at 15 percent with a face value of 50 thousand each so after me knowing that means that 15 percent i'm going to subject it to the uh first value of the dividends so they're saying each dividend is uh 50,000 each so uh i'm going to say 50,000 times the 15 percent which is going to give me uh seven seven thousand five hundred so after me getting the seven thousand five hundred i'm going to now substitute in each of these into the formula so my cost of equity is going to equal to uh the dividends which is 75 which is 7,500 7, divided by the 95,000 uh, minus the 1,000, which is my flotation, plus uh, 0 0.10. I mean 0 0.10. So when I, uh, mod, uh, when I subtract this with this, I'm going to get 94,000. So this divided by this, I'm going to get uh, 0 0.0798 plus the 0 0.1. So this plus this, I'm going to get 0 0.1798. Then I multiply it to hundred in order to make it a percentage it's going to give me uh seventeen point nine eight percent and this is going to be my uh cost of equity and and uh, we, now we are having retained earnings so for retained earnings remember retained earnings are equal to are equal to the ordinary shares but without flotation cost so it's going to be the same formula whereby the cost of retained earnings is going to equal to the dividends uh, divide by the P naught plus G. So meaning that flotation costs are not going to be catered fund. We already know our dividends, which was seven uh seven thousand seven thousand five hundred and our P naught was ninety-five uh thousand and our G was zero point uh one zero. So our cost of uh retained earnings is going to be equal to uh seven thousand five hundred divided by the ninety-five thousand plus the zero point one zero so our um, cost of retained earnings is going to equal to when i divide this and this i'm going to get 0 0.0789 uh, plus the 0 0.10 uh, so this plus this i'm going to get 0 0.1798 times 100 in order to make, to make it a percentage so it's going to be uh 17.89 percent and this is going to be my cost of retained earnings so remember the second part from our question was uh, to determine the overall or the weighted average cost of capital so hinting on this what is the weighted average cost of capital so this refers to the overall cost of all the sources of capital that a firm uh, uses in financing its operations so how do we find the weighted average cost of capital these are the steps involved in determining the weighted average cost of capital so first of you is uh, first of all you should be knowing the amount of each source of capital and then summing them up for example uh like a uh, bank loan having uh 200 uh, thousand as amount and then uh, the second step is determine the proportion of each source of capital uh, for example it's going to be bank uh, loan amount divided by the total amount of all the sources then three determine the specific cost of capital for each source then calculate the weighted average cost of capital by multiplying the proportions with the specific cost of capital now this is what i'm going to be showing you so remember with this we want to see the steps that we go through to determine the weighted average cost of capital so step one is uh determine the amount of each source of fund whereby from our previous uh question we are having bonds are having 500 million preference shares share having 300 million ordinary shares having 400 million 10 earnings having 200 million so when you add up all these this is the total you are going to be getting so step two is determine the proportion for each source of capital and this is how we determine the proportion for each source of capital so the total of all the sources which is this amount so i'm going to be getting uh bonds of uh, the 500 million uh 500 uh, million divided by the total then uh, which is going to give me uh, 0 0.36 i'm going to be taking to the small places and even with preference shares at uh, the 300 uh, million divided by the total which is going to give me 0 0.2 one taking to the small places ordinary shares 400 million divided by the total i'm going to be getting 0 0.29 uh, which is giving me two point uh, which is giving uh, which is giving me 0 0.29 taking to the small places and retain earnings 200 million uh, divided by the total giving me 0 point um uh one for taking to the small places 
So moving on to the third step is uh, determining the specific cost of capital for each source. And from our question, we already determined the specific cost of capital of each source. For bonds, it was 8.8. .8. Then uh, uh, for share, preference shares was 11. Ordinary shares was 17.98. Retained earnings was 17.89. So I'm going to divide by 100 in all so that I can uh, uh, get uh, the decimal play, uh, I can get uh, decimal numbers whereby it's going to be giving me uh, 0 0.088 and this is going to be giving me 0 0.11 and then so it's going to be giving me 0 0.1798 and this is going to give me 0 0.1789 so after doing this the next step is cash the weighted uh, weighted average cost of capital by multiplying the portions with this first cost of capital so with this I just want to show an overall view whereby uh, I'm having my source, bonds, preferentials, ordinary share, retain earnings, and then uh, the amount, that is for step one, knowing the amount, which was uh, 590 million, 300 million, 400 million, 200 million, and the total, uh, this is the total. Then step two, proportion, whereby I was having my portion as 0.38 for bonds, preferential as 0 0.21, ordinary share as 0 0.29, retain earnings 0 0.14, and gives me a total of one then a uh, specific cost as my step three was 0 0.088 and this for preference shares uh, 0 0.11 ordinary shares uh, 0 0.1798 pre, uh, pre retained earnings uh, 0 0.1789 and uh, my weighted average cost remember they told me I multiply the proportions times the specific so this time was this I'm going to be getting 0. 032 and this time with this I'm going to be getting 0 0.023 this time with this I'm going to be getting 0 0.052 and this time with this I'm going to be getting 0 0.025 and when I add all this I'm going to be getting a total of 0 0.132 and in order to determine my uh, weighted average cost of capital I'm going to uh, turn it into a percentage by multiplying it with 100 so this time was 100 which is going to give me 13.2 uh 13.2 percent and this is going to be my weighted average cost of capital thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe so that you can get notification for other videos